Okay, I wanted to share with you, and I have shared with uh, at least two people here in studio, uh, my nightmare. It happened about two weeks ago. Uh, I had a, had a nightmare with a black limousine following my wife and myself, and we gave it the slip, we thought, and we were walking a kind of a rural spot up a hill afterwards, and as we did that, we noticed that there was a, a little skunk following us. And I said to my wife, well, we better uh, move along here, get away from this uh, little skunk, because he could still squirt us, you know. So we moved a little faster, but the skunk followed us. And the skunk got bigger and bigger and bigger and became a very large skunk. I said, wow, I don't know what we're going to do. And then we looked, and that skunk had turned into a leering Donald Trump. <laughs> we were frightened. But uh, I found a, an oil barrel that appeared all of a sudden in my dream, and a 55-gallon oil drum, and I turned it on its side, heavy sucker, and I shoved it at Donald Trump. And he jumped out of the way, and then I began yelling, and my wife woke me up, Craig, what's wrong, what's wrong? And, and uh, I, I told her my dream. So that, uh, that concludes my nightmare. And I, uh, I never had a politician in my nightmares before. And we've had some bad politicians. But uh, this, this uh, situation has reached a point where he's a part of my nightmares now. And I wanted to go around the room here and uh, just talk about uh, what we have going on here in, uh, in the United States of America. So I've got your, your mics up, and uh, whoever wants to speak first, uh, have at it. I thought it was interesting that um, you told the story about your nightmare because when we were listening to the Alice Cooper song, I'm thinking this has so many overtones towards the political situation that we're in right now. And then, you know, your, your nightmare certainly <laughs> corroborated that. Um, it wasn't hard to interpret that nightmare no. at all. <laughs> it's pretty clear. <laughs> that stinky little skunk <laughs> becomes a really big skunk, <laughs> and he won't leave. He won't leave. <laughs> you can't even get it with an oil barrel. And I thought it was interesting in my, in my dream it was an oil barrel. Right, right. No, I, I, I know the metaphors are amazing. <clears throat> you know, that, that's a... I dream in metaphor, I think. <clears throat> Do. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I think welcome, welcome to my nightmare, my breakdown. I mean, uh, you know, the country in so many ways is in a breakdown, and it's also in a nightmare. I mean, it is a nightmare, because I think one of the nightmarish things about it is that there are so much disruption. You you know, it's like you don't even know where to start. Like, what, what, what cause do you pick up? You know, I mean, it, it's, there's just there's so many. So to choose from. many. And, and, you know, there's that overhanging possible nuclear threat with North Korea, not to mention just, mm -hmm. you know. I do worry about that. And I think that might have uh, been the uh, precipitator of my nightmare, uh, realizing that uh, Donald J. Trump was poking the eye of uh, the rocket man, as he calls him. And who's going to give in a case like that? They're both uh, megalomaniacs, narcissistic, and all of that. Um, where does that end? Where does that end? And that's why Bob, Bob Corker, Senator Bob Corker, said, you know, I'm worried about World, World War III, and he's a Republican who did support uh, Donald Trump before. So when somebody like that says what he said, I, no wonder I, I had a nightmare. Alex? Well, when I was listening to the first song, I, you know, it just brought me into the realm of that topic of the unconscious because talking about dreams. So <coughs> relevant to the difficulties in political discourse, one thing that comes into my mind is Carl Jung said, 95% of what people think is reality is projection mm -hmm. of their own unconscious, you know, uh, anxieties, fears, whatever. Um, in a sense, uh, you know, if your life is not pleasant, we're all living in a nightmare. When you have people of the stature of uh, major political figures, major national leaders, then, uh, you know, 
Um, you said Donald Trump is living in your nightmare. Um, but if you turn it around, I mean, it's reciprocal. You are you you and the United States, to a large degree, right now, are living in Donald Trump's nightmare. And but you know, I mean, talking about the great unknown, because of the way media works right now, so much on re reality doesn't matter; it's image that matters. And especially, I, one of my critiques of Donald Trump is that he, it's a critique, but it also, in a certain way, is a acknowledgement of an accomplishment on our part. He's the greatest public relations president we have ever had. And he studied public relations, and he uses it. So we don't always know what the reality is. And um, because of conflicting narratives in the media, it's very, very difficult you know, um, to know what the reality is. So I think it's incumbent upon us, um, because by the way that we live, and by the things that we think, and the things that we do, we create, you know, we create our reality, we also influence other people. You're a character in my dream, but I'm also a character in your dream. And so when we manifest, you know, our reality through the decisions that we make, um, you know, I just want to be a person who tries to manifest a good reality so that, you know, if Donald Trump is living in a nightmare or if he's a part, if I'm a part of his nightmare, I want to be able to help bring things into consciousness that change that reality. Good goals, good goals. <laughs> Larry, uh, what do well, we think? I, they've Wake said, up. They've said a lot. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the, the song and the music. and uh, I'm Alice Cooper, I, I don't listen to a lot of Alice Cooper, but uh, he had something in that song that I'm not a musician, but I think there's something called like a tritone or a diminished fifth that where it's just a little off it's like in the simpsons opening song where they go the simpsons mm -hmm. it's just not right and yes. it's unsettling it's and, unsettling and there was unsettling sounds in that song uh and i think that that's what musicians are doing they're they're going to either try to mimic what we feel or control what we feel and i just noticed that in the song that it was mm -hmm. uh, it's if you aren't scared get scared mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of a feeling yeah so. yeah yeah, uh, Jim Dowling. Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if we're talking about um, current politics, I think we're also, um, you know, we're talking about leadership that embodies a great unknown. Um, you know, uh, we are not doing things the way we have in the past. And uh, well, I just saw Terry Tempest Williams a couple nights ago at Shasta College, and. She was talking about the threat to uh, our national parks. That was a big theme for her. And I, we just don't know how the world is going to change, but we knew coming in that there was real intentions of changing things, of turning things upside down. And, uh, well, it's a big question. It's what is next? It seems like every week, a big surprise is dished out to the American public, and uh, it is unknown. Where are we headed? So, uh, and, you know, the scary thing is, uh, to me, is that I don't think Donald Trump has an idea. I think he just uh, makes it up as he goes along. He's uh, not really uh, a thinker. He's a winner. He's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his mind his mind is the great unknown. Yes, I think so. It's, it's kind of well, I also think his tax returns are also the great unknown. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure.